Okay, we're going to look at the Fourier transform of a cos wave which has an amplitude A, it's at the frequency omega naught, and it has an offset of phase theta. We're going to try to understand how to interpret the equation for the Fourier transform. If you look up a set of uh, Fourier transform tables, you'll find that the Fourier transform is the summation of two delta functions. Here's the Fourier transform of the cos wave, and if we just look at this second line, uh, it's got an amplitude of a times pi. There's a, also a complex uh, multiple of e to the j theta times one of the delta functions, plus a similar gain, but there's a negative theta on the other delta function. And what does this mean? So I'd like to just uh, think about that and try to unpack that to have a physical interpretation of what this equation means. To do that, let's think about the intermediate step. All I've done here is to write out the equation, the different form of the cos function, uh, in terms of the complex exponentials. So cos, as we know, is half of e to the j, whatever the argument is, plus e to the negative j of the argument. And here the argument's omega naught t plus theta. And we match up these two terms here, and that is what happens in the Fourier transform. But I want to think about what these are in terms of actual signals. So just before I do that, let's think about uh, how we plot this. Okay, because this is often a uh, point for confusion. So this is a Fourier transform. It's a function of the frequency omega. Um, if we just look at this function here, the delta functions mean there's two delta functions. Uh, so there's only two frequencies that exist here. There's one is when delta, uh, when omega equals omega naught, and that's a positive value of omega naught we're drawing it for. Uh, and the height of that, the magnitude of this delta function, this has unit magnitude, so this height is a times pi. And then this one also has a times pi, and this delta function is at negative omega naught. So this is omega naught, and this is negative omega naught. Okay, so this here is the magnitude of the Fourier transform. The magnitude. Okay, let's plot the phase underneath. We always have uh, a magnitude and a phase. And so this is really where we want to uh, start understanding uh, what this e to the j theta is. And we, I want to do it for different values of theta so that we can see uh, what it means in physical waveforms. So let's plot it for, uh, there's only going to be possibly two values, one at omega naught because it's the delta function, and one at negative omega naught. And if this is the phase of x, j, omega. Um, so if theta equals zero, then this phase is zero, and this phase is zero. Okay, the magnitude of this is one, of this term is one, but the phase, if theta equals zero, the phase is zero. So this is this plot here with zeros, zero everywhere. That's if theta equals zero, that's, if we look back up here, that's just the cos wave with no offset. And this would be the Fourier transform. So what if there is an offset? Let's pick a a common offset um, that we're interested in and that's uh, another interesting waveform uh, and let's pick theta equals minus pi on 2 and if it's minus pi on 2 then for the positive omega the, the angle is minus pi on 2 so this would be a delta function here of angle minus pi on 2 and this one here would be where the minuses would cancel, so this would be a positive angle at the negative frequency of the same, but this is positive pi on two. Okay, so this would be the Fourier transform. This is a magnitude plot and the phase plot when theta equals minus pi on two. And so those are two cases that I just want to first uh, touch on. So let me draw the first case first. So what is this when these are zeros here. Well, these are two different 
complex numbers. This is what we've got here, these ex complex exponentials. So let's draw them on the unit circle and see what is happening. So here's the complex, uh, the unit circle, uh, and this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. And what is going on when theta equals zero? When theta equals zero, this complex number here, which corresponds to this one here, this complex number here, uh, when theta equals zero, is a complex number that's for time equals zero, starts here, where the angle equals zero, the magnitude equals 1, if we just ignore the a on 2 for the moment, because that just scales the size of the circle. Um, so we've got uh, here, this one here, is theta equals 0, is this point, and as time goes up, this point is going to move around this circle at a frequency, at a rate, given by omega naught. This point, if theta equals 0, starts at the same angle, uh, and if time equals zero, starts at zero, and as time goes up because of the negative, it's going to move in this direction around the circle. So what does that mean in terms of waveforms? Well, if I'm looking in the imaginary axis, they're starting at zero, this one's increasing, and then decreasing and going back to zero. This one starts here and decreases, and goes in the opposite direction. So as time goes on, this they're starting at zero, this one is increasing as a sine wave, and, and this one is decreasing. And when they, they're the same on the same circle. So when they're adding together, so when you add those two waveforms together, you get zero. So the resultant is nothing in the imaginary direction. That's the result. Is no signal in the imaginary direction. In the real direction, which I'll plot down here, and you just have to look, look at it, imagine looking at it on the side as time increases, this is the real, we're just projecting down this way, those points, they start here, and the as this one moves around it gets less, and then negative, and so on. This one also gets less, and in this direction, they both are a cos wave. Okay, this one goes that way, this one comes this way, but in terms of its real component, the real component is positive, and both of their real components go decrease at the same rate, and then they go negative at the same rate, so they're both this waveform. When we add them together, we'll get two times this, but then we divide by two, and so we get recover this. Okay, so this is what happens when we had theta equals zero. We got nothing in the imaginary, and as we expect, we would get a cos waveform in the real. If you look on the side there, that's a cos waveform. Okay, let's think now for another value of theta, this other one that I've drawn, when theta equals minus pi on 2. So let's again draw our circle here. And what does minus pi on 2 mean? Well, when it's minus pi on 2, this term here starts when time equals 0, it's starting down here at minus pi on 2. So this is minus pi on 2. But this is the positive omega naught, so when time increases it's going to move around this way, around the circle. So it starts at minus pi on 2 and it moves this way around the circle. This point here, because of that negative here, the negative with the minus, it starts at positive pi on 2, but because it's a negative frequency, it's going to move this way around the circle as time increases. So what does this mean for our plots if we project in and look at our imaginary signal? Well, this one now starts here and does this. This one starts here and does this. And when they add together, again, they cancel for zero. And I think you can see that no matter what the value of theta, in the imaginary, they're going to cancel. And what happens in the real direction? So in the real direction, again, we look on the side, the real. In this case, they're starting at zero, but both of them, again, are increasing to be more positive in the real dimension on the side, and then they cross each other and they start decreasing and so on. So again, they, this time now, they start here at zero and they increase, and then they decrease 
and they have this waveform. And if you look on the side, this is the sine waveform. And we know from, uh, from uh, mathematical uh, expressions uh, that the cos waveform shifted by minus pi on 2 gives us the sine waveform. So again, there's no waveform in the imaginary. It's purely a real waveform, and it's now the sine waveform when theta equals minus pi on 2. And I think from this you can see that for other general values of theta, as we said, they will always cancel in the imaginary direction. And they will, so they will always be real signals, and they'll be real signals simply with different phase offsets. And so this is, I think, an important uh, way that I always view when I look at a Fourier transform of a cos waveform with different phase offsets. I think of the amplitude and the phase and while I'm looking at two delta functions in the frequency domain, in the Fourier transform, I'm, all, I'm thinking about this unit circle and I'm thinking about those two delta functions representing points on the unit circle that are moving around the unit circle and that are cancelling in the imaginary and adding in the real. And depending on where they start, it tells us me the phase of that uh, signal. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos and um, a check below uh, to see links to other relevant videos.